Right, hello everybody, and uh, this is the promised uh, studio workshop office update video uh, that I said I was going to do that I uh, hadn't got round to yet, so I thought I would do it now uh, because I'm gonna, I'm just about to uh, film uh, the final couple of scenes uh, concerning this machine here. This is an Atari uh, 600XL, and um, I did a bit of work on it. Fr last Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday morning and uh, this one was in for uh, a monitor port uh, modification because it's an NTSC machine um, so I've done all the filming of the work uh, so this is, I was at the point of just doing the uh, the final demonstration of the machine now that the uh, modifications are done last Monday and I just got completely wound up in uh, cabling here on the desk uh, so I stopped what I was doing and uh, I decided to finally uh, mount these cameras to the wall uh, and that well, initially it took about a day but I had all sorts of problems I needed to get the shelving out of the way as well this is one of the problems that I had because these two parts cabinets as you might remember if you've been watching the videos, they were just propped up on the desk here. As so all of this equipment here was pushed out by about six inches or so. Uh, and you couldn't actually get to the drawers behind the behind this hot air station and the desoldering gun. So it wasn't uh, optimal. It wasn't meant to be permanent, of course. I had intended to put these on the wall anyway. But as is usually the case with these things, uh, you hit all kinds of unexpected problems. And the first problem I had here is that this boxed in section in the corner at first i thought it was just plasterboard hiding pipework well and it is in a way but uh the, the reason it's there because above here there was never any storage tank or anything upstairs uh because it used to have a flat roof this building so there's just a about eight inches or so of uh plywood and joists and stuff up there or a foot and um now it's had a it's had a pitched roof put on it years ago i figured out what probably is behind this boxed in section is actually the drain pipe for the roof because i had a look at some pictures of other houses that don't have the pitched roof and they seem to have a, a little drainage point up there and i don't think the drain pipe would fit in the cavity wall so it's obviously that this is the disused drain pipe for the roof um now it appear it does have plasterboard on top of it, but underneath the plasterboard, when I was drilling into it, uh, there is actually what appears to be hardboard. Obviously, I didn't want to go right through to the uh, to, to the drain pipe because I don't want a, an open connection to the to the sewer. But uh, anyway, I, I, I figured it out. I just took my time. I didn't want to do anything rash, and uh, obviously, I was able to put a few roll plugs in there and get that shelf up on the wall so that was okay but of course I changed my mind about the position of the cabinets at first I was going to put the two cabinets next to each other up here but that I quickly realized that that was going to create more problems as far as access to this desoldering gun I like to have this desoldering station on top of the hot air station reason being that the handset hangs down quite awkwardly so I've managed to get it so that that just drapes down the side of the desk there so that's all very nice and there's just enough room to put the put the handset back in the holster at the side um, so I had originally in fact I, I, yeah I, I drilled holes here this is a now this is a stud wall so we've got the brick wall here at the side the boxed in section with the drain pipe and this is a stud wall. Now normally with a stud wall you have buttons every, what, couple of feet apart? Um, but I quickly realised when I was putting this monitor up <laughs> a while ago, there is nothing, there is not a single button behind this wall. On the other side of this wall is the bathroom. And I'm assuming the, obviously the radiator pipework and whatnot behind there. But there is nothing, not a single button behind this plasterboard wall and it's got a bit of a curve in it anyway so anyway I, I had to obviously research uh, plasterboard fixings and I'm quite happy with this monitor mount and the floating shelf and everything I used uh, 
Fisher fixings, the little grey plastic ones actually that turned out to be the best ones. Um, so I had all these holes anyway, I'd changed my mind about putting the cabinet there for obvious reasons because it was going to hit this. Um, and I've put it on this side instead. So I had all these holes to fill up when I changed my mind about where to put stuff. And of course when you fill a hole up it's with filler. And then I noticed all sorts of other defects on the wall. <laughs> and you got to wait for the filler to dry. And sand it down and there was dust. And I actually ended up roller rollering this entire section of wall the other day um, just repainting it completely because there was that many blemishes on it which really caught the light when it's lit from above so that took time and, and eventually I got the the shelving up uh, now this bracket here was the first one I put on I left plenty of space here the, the initial idea was to do away with the tripod and just have a single camera set up in fact so this would double as the overhead camera and then when I wanted to do a B camera shot I would just move it to this position here, extend it on the on the arm. But then I realised I thought, well, that's really that's going to make more work because I, I quite like switching between the overhead shot and the long shot um, in real time in Open Broadcaster. And unless I'm just doing a quick video, obviously that would have been fine. I could have just used this, put it, moved it uh, over the top of the job. Um, and done it that way but I think for longer form videos I definitely need the two camera setup so after I put this one on uh, about a day later I thought I've got an idea why not because when this one was the overhead camera it did intrude a little bit and it was going to get in the way of the tripod camera if I used it so I had this idea that I've got just enough space up here to put the other brackets which I had to buy of course and wait for and put the other one up here and use this one as the overhead camera so I get rid of the clamp because this arm was clamped to the desk here so that's gone so I've got more space at the right hand side of the desk because cables are out the way cabinets are out the way the clamp's gone and I've got loads more desk space now and I don't have to have the tripod now the tripod was down here and of course the tripod was in the way of the drawer so now I can open the drawer and it's no problem and get in the cupboard underneath, which is great. One thing I did also want to get rid of was this, which is the soft light. I was hoping to get rid of that because it's kind of in the way. So I've got a couple of ideas about that. I've ordered a couple of, like a set of two um, freestanding LED soft light panels, uh, 6500K, which is my preferred colour temperature. But uh, there's some argy-bargy about that as well because the, the seller, I think he's had his account looked at or something so whether they'll turn up or not i don't know and i still do need this extra light uh the reason that that was uh an issue uh or up in the air was that I, also this week i finally put the um ikea ultra cheap uh well got the wrong switch there we go so the um the spotlight fittings that I bought from Ikea about two months ago because just because they were a bargain they're so cheap it's just unbelievable I think about nine quid or something for the four for the one with four fittings on it's absolutely remarkable so I bought them because I like the look of them anyway uh, and I've replaced the big uh, I had the big lampshades hanging down and uh, this is a quite a low ceiling you almost hit your head on the on the pendant light so they've gone, so I've, I've put these in and uh, obviously it's the first time I've had spotlights, uh, GU10 lights in a in an environment like this. It's, uh, they're a little bit harsh, of course, that's, that's, a, that's the kind of characteristic of these things. And there's such a plethora of different bulb types and whatnot and wattages and beam angles and all that sort of stuff. These were just the first ones I saw, so this is kind of a version 1 lighting system. Um, but I'm really glad I put these ones on separate switches so I can turn that one off and I don't need it, which normally I don't. What I initially thought was that this would do on its own uh, to light the desk uh, when I'm working and when I'm filming. But I still need something to light this side of the job because obviously most of the time you're looking at it from this perspective. And if I turn the soft light off here, like so... It's a bit dark, It's you're not getting any fill light from the front here, so I think we still need something at this corner, unfortunately. 
uh, but it's a lot better than it was and it's a lot brighter uh, even without the uh, the fill light so that's good i'm fairly happy with the improvement in desk space time will tell what these uh, these lights actually do to the quality of the videos i also bought uh, <laughs> i bought a dimmer as well uh, but the back box on the on the wall <laughs> is only two millimeters deep, uh, two uh, centimeters deep, and of course the dimmer uh, needs a two and a half centimeter uh, back box. And moreover, these uh, bulbs aren't dimmable. It turns out uh, I never thought that at the time. I didn't think I'd need to dim them. The idea of having a dimmer is to just take the edge off them a little bit, um, because obviously these spotlights tend to create a lot of multiple shadows and stuff uh, just to make things as flexible as possible but this is what I'm spending basically the patreon money that my patrons so kindly uh, provide uh, this is where it's going but I'm yeah I'm, I was determined to just try and improve uh, the setup make it easier to use make it because the last time I have to spend uh, setting up tripods and lights and stuff like that the more inclined I'm going to be to film stuff, obviously, and I'm, I'm aiming to film as much as I possibly can. So that was the idea here anyway. So, yeah, so I'm quite pleased with that. I'm, I'm quite happy with the lights. Uh, they make the room look nice. So, yeah, so I'm waiting for this soft light. I'll probably replace the back box. Whether I end up putting the dimmer in or not, I don't know, but I think it would just make it a bit more flexible. Of course, this is also a, a stud wall. It's only six centimetres deep. And the light switch for the spare room is directly behind that one. But I think I can fit it in. Speaking of the spare room, we'll go and have a look. Let's go and have a look in here. Apologies for the mess in advance. It is an absolute bomb site. Of course, we need some decent light in here as well. That's absolutely terrible. But yes, this is the, this is the spare room, the storage room. Completely and utterly unpacked. So all the, well, all but two of the big uh, removal boxes have been uh, unpacked, emptied, destroyed. There's the old uh, lampshades from next door that I've just took off, by the by. Um, glad to see the back of them. There's a pile of cables. Uh, I mean, some of these boxes are customer stuff because I've got just a ridiculous backlog of stuff. Absolutely unbelievable. Um, but it's, it's always the same. I thought I'll get the... This, the, the lighting and the cameras and everything, I'll get them all done and just get that out of the way for good and that's that office done. But of course, it just, it doesn't matter what you do. You hit problems, you change your mind about things, things don't work exactly as you thought they would. The lights look different to how you thought they would and it just goes on and on and on and on. So I've got very little done this week. Um, but uh, after I finish this, I'm going to get straight back into... Uh, finishing that video so you can all watch it and enjoy it hopefully uh, but yeah so there's loads of stuff in here I mean I can't I can hardly get some of the drawers open there's a 16 bit stuff in there we've got these trees here that I can pull out stuff falling on the floor <laughs> uh, but yeah the, these trees so there's, there's quite a lot of space not everything's filled up yet uh, which is good um, there's a Atari computers they are fairly got these shelves fairly densely packed but there's still multiple uh, computers on each shelf some of them are still bubble wrapped there's some more <laughs> it's quite cool that you can pull the pull the trees out like that obviously this is what the previous owner left to use this is a wardrobe uh, him and his partner um, so there was just his and her clothes in here so I took the rails out anyway there's the old brackets on the rails um, but the same cabinets, the same IKEA cabinets that I bought for the for our wardrobes in the bedroom. But I left this in here, and I took the rails out, and I've just put more and more shelves in. And I think there's enough shelves. I've got, got some more down here, actually, <laughs> some more of the small ones. Um, and one thing as well that I really do like is these big uh, plastic boxes. Uh, I've got some clear ones. There's some old model kits from my parents' house, which I managed to salvage. Um, but yeah, these, these storage boxes, I've gone absolutely berserk with boxes since I discovered that almost all shops now just have this ridiculous collection of inexpensive plastic storage boxes. So I've bought loads of them. I've got some big ones down there that haven't got anything in them yet. 
we've got these shallower ones up here we've got some of them next door as well um so yeah that was uh, the idea is to just uh absorb everything on these shelves obviously uh, this all needs to be tidied up and categorized it was more or less a case of just emptying emptying the boxes straight onto these shelves there's tons of space here uh, I'm going to put some of those big boxes on these shelves. Um, half the cardboard boxes have got next to nothing in them now. Um, so that's going to be good when it's done, hopefully. So this is an ongoing job, but uh, we'll get there. There's my mother's old guitar. I took all the, the silly uh, flight stickers off it and cleaned it up. That's uh, 44 years old now, that guitar case, and it's looking in pretty good shape. There we go. So we'll go back next door. I just want to show you the packing desk and stuff like this. I put this on the floor. This plastic carpet protector stuff uh, because the well the cats just especially Sonny he just developed this habit of uh, clawing the carpet and pulling the fibers out. You you would just sit in my room in the office here and just while I'm busy working I'd hear the carpet being clawed a bit. So I've banished them all from the bedroom, the bedrooms, all of them. And now, of course, what, what Sonny would then do if I'd shut the door on him is he'd claw the landing carpet up, so I've put all this stuff down. This appears to be working reasonably well. He can't, if the door's shut, he can't claw this um, or do anything with it at all. So that's that's worked. I'd probably just leave it down. It's, uh, it's keeping the carpet clean anyway, so that's good. Uh, yeah, this is the packing desk. Oh, excuse the mess. This was actually quite tidy before I started making alterations the other day. Of course, it just becomes a dumping ground for all sorts of stuff. Um, so, yeah, so that's going to get cleared up. But that, those, those boxes, the idea is that if customers, a customer sends stuff in and I don't keep the box that he sent them in because it's, maybe it's fallen apart, I'll put them in these storage boxes. That big storage box has got quite a lot of stuff in it belonging to a client, which I need to make a start on. Um, but yeah, that's working out quite well. When, when all the crap's moved off this desk, it actually looks quite nice. So this desk I'm using for when I box stuff up. Um, and hopefully that light will move, as I say. I'll put the smaller LED one up in the corner here. And it shouldn't uh, be too much of an obstruction. And uh, that'll be that. But yeah, so everything uh, has got its bit. This corner's a mess as well. Obviously, while I've been working on the room, everything gets chucked there because I had to empty some of the cupboards when I moved the desk. Um, so that's all going to get tidied up. We've got more boxes up there, most of which are empty, which I can use, which is good. But it's just nice to have uh, plenty of floor space, plenty of desk space, well, at least when this is clear, um, where I can actually put things. Because where we were before, I had zero desk space, absolutely nothing at all that wasn't already covered and stuff. There's the guitar, my lovely guitar. And this I bought the other week, about a month back in fact. The Fender Hot Rod Deluxe version 4. The, the fella I bought it from, he bought it in 2019, late 2019, just before the lockdown started. He was in a band at the time, poor lad. And uh, his live gig playing thing just went completely down the toilet for about a year and a half, which is very unfortunate quite scandalous actually and uh but there you go it happened uh it was the same for everybody and uh so it's this has barely been used i think he paid about a thousand pounds for it which is about the, the rrp for these things now so it's basically in mint condition and uh i talked him down to 500 quid i've never had a nice amplifier i thought it was time to treat myself but yeah it's got one of those lion tamer gadgets so this is the preamp outcomes here and this is just a variable resistor and then it goes back into the effects loop so you can drive the preamp quite hard without actually putting the windows out because this is a 40 watt amp and it is very very loud um but yeah it's beautiful it's a valve amp and uh it just goes with this guitar absolutely beautifully and uh, there's my bookshelf which got completely filled up with about half the books I've got. Yeah, I couldn't resist that and it is, I, I, I do not regret buying that at all. I very rarely treat myself to something that isn't basically, uh, isn't connected with work. But I bought that guitar a couple of years ago and uh, now I've got an amp, and I want for nothing in the realm of uh, the guitar. That big black bag is just full of rubbish. There's a bin strike at the moment round here. So we've just got piles and piles of refuse building up. 
all the bins are in the street rubbish all over the place and the council tax gone up to 140 quid a month isn't that remarkable so anyway i just wanted to show you basically all of the patreon money is going at the moment and hopefully when that's all done this is going to be the setup for the foreseeable future I'm hoping it's going to be very, very flexible. But yeah, I mean, without the uh, support of the patrons, I just wouldn't be doing any of this. I wouldn't be putting this much effort and this much uh, investment uh, into the videos. And I'm so grateful for the opportunity to be able to do this, really. am. So that's my way of saying thank you, really, is to try and make things a bit better. So, uh, yeah, so that's it. So I want to thank everybody uh, for their support. I really, really appreciate it. I really love The Office. The way it's coming together i really love it and uh hopefully lots of good times ahead and there's certainly uh, a lot of work to get through and i'm going to film as much as i possibly can of it starting with this one there'll be a, a video of this machine coming up pretty shortly fairly imminently for the patrons initially with no ads and uh, then for everybody to enjoy so i'll leave it there because i've gone on quite a long time here <laughs> As I say, it takes a lot of time, so apologies to everybody who's waiting for the work to be done. Uh, I'm expecting people to start losing their patience shortly. But uh, like I say, the reason that I stopped what I was doing and did this work is because I was just, I couldn't, even with this big desk, uh, I was getting completely tangled up in wires. When I put tools down here, the soldering iron wires were getting tangled up in and stuff and it really got on my nerves. So we'll see how this goes anyway, and hopefully these brackets won't pull out of the wall. <laughs> oh yeah, these IKEA, finally, these IKEA brackets, I really like the look of them because they're grey, uh, and they're not terribly expensive, but the end here, where it normally goes into the little pivot thing, that it came with the one that screws to the desk or clips to the desk, it, it's too wide for most brackets like this, and this one's got a little plastic collar on it. And I had a hell of a time with both of these, trying to put them in a vice, clamp them down, uh, and get them to fit this, uh, these brackets here. So we'll just have to see how it goes, and hopefully these fixings will hold as well. I <laughs> uh, just don't know, because there's nothing else I can do. The way I, I've chosen to have the room laid out this way, and that happens to be a stud wall, and it happens to be a stud wall with no buttons in it. So we'll just have to see how it goes. I'll just have to be careful. Anyway, so yes, sincere thanks to uh, all the patrons. Uh, your contributions are so, so pivotal and crucial uh, to any of this stuff getting done at all. And likewise uh, to my video sponsor. Uh, like I say, without uh, that income from uh, the videos, uh, none of these improvements would be uh, happening. So uh, thank you from the bottom of my heart. I really, really appreciate it. And I uh, hope you're going to enjoy uh, the fruits of my labour. I'll, I'll leave it at that. And uh, thank you very much for watching. And I will see you in the next video. So bye-bye for now. And thank you to everybody.